Awesome. <laughs> oh, I need to disable the. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. We'll give everybody Hello. a few minutes. Janet Dean, how's it going? I have toilet paper. <laughs> you do? <laughs> Sorry, inside joke. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, hold on. <laughs> I have this. Oh, that's good. <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, this this is all I have left. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna be here. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So I'm gonna get you know those outdoor heat lamps. Uh huh. I'm gonna get one so we can still have a Christmas party. Oh, okay. Cool. Outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do bowling. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Pamela, awesome. Pamela, you're in charge of pinning the screen. I don't seem to have that capability. Oh, we're, we're not going to do that yet. Wait, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, uh, okay. It's <laughs> bouncing around a little bit there, but I know. Me okay. the big um, so, so, welcome everyone. Um, I'm just going to uh, quickly go over some Zoom etiquette, and then Stacy is going to introduce Mike. Um, it sounds like a lot of you already know him. Um, so Mike is going to just kind of uh, introduce the ceramic studio in our Buddhas um, and then do a wheel throwing demo. And um, during this time, we ask that you mute yourself. There will be plenty of time for chatting and Q&A at the end, but, but during the um, demonstration, keep yourself muted. Um, I'm going to go ahead and spotlight Mike's video once Stacy introduces him, so there won't be a lot of screen jumping around during. Him. So um, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and Stacy. Okay. Oh, also, I want to mention if you do have questions during the demo, or if you're having any technical issues, just go ahead and put those in the chat, and Stacy and I will address them for you, and we'll make sure that Mike is. Um, Mike is aware of your questions once he can answer them. Okay, Stacy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to, yeah, most of you do know Mike, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. Um, uh, Mike's been an artist and athlete for as long as he can remember. The sensation of doing something, anything creatively active, has always been his life's favorite pursuit. Evergreen State College brought him to Olympia in the early 90s. He likes how close it is to the ocean when he wants to surf and how people are passionate and communicative about their ideas. He likes the walkability and bikeability and everything about this community still resonates with his heart and mind. Although he learned to work with clay in middle school, he really began to focus it in, focus in on it in the late 90s and early 2000s. From this time to now, he's continuously developed his skills as a tile artist and potter. And we're all very proud of his work. And um, he's got some beautiful installations around Olympia, which uh, maybe Mike can talk about later. Um, and um, we've enjoyed so much having him in, as part of the our Buddhist community. Um, our students love your classes, and we're so grateful for everything that you've um, put into making making this all a community wide success. So, uh, with that, welcome, Mike. And thank you, um, Stacy. Yeah, I'm going to mute myself, and we'll keep an eye on the chat if there's any questions. For for the anybody who's wondering who Stacy is, she is the founder and current executive director of uh, Arbutus. And um, what they're looking, your Arbutus is looking for a new one, right? Yeah, my job's open right now. It's terrible timing. I had planned to yeah. leave uh, back in January, and then I 
decided I better stay on for a while, but it's actually a pretty good time to transition in a lot of ways, so we're still uh, putting it out there, but yeah, I forgot to even say who I am, but yeah, thank you, Mike. <laughs> I, I was going to apply, but I decided I would rather uh, go go for the presidency. Yeah. <laughs> You or, should. Or Olympia's <laughs> mayor, I guess. That would work. Yeah. You'd get some votes, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So apply for the. You're you're gonna be around Arbutus. So yeah, I be, mean, it's so hard to know how this is all gonna play out. I I, I do. Um, want to make myself as available as I possibly can for the transition, but I also want to give the next executive director as much space as they need and not be around too much. And so, you know, it's sort of a fine thing. And I think it's just going to you know, happen organically where, I, you know, I'm here as needed. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't really know how it's going to play out, but I, I want to support the organization without being in the way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because uh, Arbutus is such a cool little art organization in Olympia that supports a lot of artists, and more than that, just people being creative in a in a space, and that that was like your mission, yeah. Yeah, I I just wanted a lot of artists to be able to make a living <laughs> it's about yeah. economic development really and and yeah. um and and opportunity for artists and to build resiliency through creative skills in the community um yeah so i i could go on about that i'll do another yeah. talk about our beauty sometime <laughs> well i'm always proud of saying that i'm you know a, a instructor here and stuff and it's always like awesome awesome it's just i think it's awesome so um, <laughs> thank you so i think with that i'm gonna show everybody around real quick the studio sounds good like um this is where i think we'll be able to social distance when we're hit stage two or three or um when Inslee gives the green light on it i i think there's plenty of space to do that in here i mean but um is it am I super shaky walking around back so as you can see this is where um, clay storage people's work storage it's kind of pretty empty right now there's the wood shop in there um, and this is more for people who've never been here kind of interested in it interested in um trying to check it out at some point please do um here's some people's clay and some work that i think got stopped with uh due to the rona um pretty all right here's our kilns this is our newer kiln here's some of our glazes Blaze chart, some signs, stuff like that. Um, some tools, some different things. Come in here. Am I making everybody dizzy? <clears throat> here is the lighting's a little weird, but here's um, carts and carts of different. Um, people's work, students work and instructors work in different um, different parts of progress and lots of this fired stuff and um, stuff to be picked up. But um, yeah, I just wanted to show everyone that it's a pretty good little school. And so, um, so I'm like not a super um, experienced Zoomer. So I apologize to everyone. And I want to be sure that I can watch the chats so I can answer questions. Um, hey, Mike. I, oh, I'm yeah, gonna, I I'm see gonna, that. 
Yeah, we we'll um, Pamela and I will keep an eye on the chat box and we'll um, butt in and let you know if there's something that needs to be answered or if we can save it to the end. So you don't have to worry about oh, that. Oh, okay. Um, okay, okay. I, I um, did post a little note there to check in about the our artist in, the ceramic artist in residence position is open too. So if anybody on the call is interested in looking at that, there's a a, a link to information on our homepage, our beautiful yeah. school dot org. And yeah, there's a studio and, space um, up there. Erica, there's your bowls again, waiting, <laughs> waiting, sorry. Um, so this is where we keep the artists in residence and they live up there <laughs> and they make stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, so apply, you'll have fun, right? <clears throat> Okay, so, um, any questions? I want to, I want to, um, be sure I can answer any people's questions before I start just kind of talking about, um, clay and myself and stuff like that. So, nothing? No people have any questions. Okay. So I want to share some photos of um, kind of stuff I like and think about quite a bit. And that um, helps my creativity and First photo I want to show you, this is my mom and dad. And um, they're on the top of Mount Rainier. And this is sometime in the 70s. And, um, you know, they um, were really super active. They still are super duper active along with um, my two brothers. And um, that was... Uh, something, I don't know, I was so fortunate to come from a, a family that was super active and super artistic. You know, my mom, super creative person, my dad as well. And so um, I feel like I had um, uh, that, that really um, um, was, um, made things really fun. I'm, I'm um, working on my sharing style. I'm, I apologize, it's not coming up. What the heck? Oh, there. Yeah, I don't know if how good at this I am, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm screwing up. Um, the other thing um, that I think is awesome is my cat. This is my cat, Claire. And this is, she's got a lion cut. She's really, um, she's a Himalayan seal point Persian. And that's my number one job is picking up fuzz balls in my house and trying to comb her. I mean, and I'm pretty good at it. If I used all that time for something else, I would be a professional at it. So um, that's why she has a lion cut right now. But um, I wanted to show one more thing. And this is um, a a piece of art I made real early on in Claire's life. And this is like, this is pretty neat. This is um, may maybe three feet by five feet tall. Um, and like, a, it's just it's really, f f I like it. It's maybe my favorite thing I've ever made. 
of my favorite thing, most favorite thing. So, yeah. Um. Okay. So. Hey. Oh, Mike. Now, can, can I butt in again? Is your yeah. is that photo of your artwork um, something that can be shown bigger on on the screen, or was it not opening up? Can Can you open oh, it? Up? It was showed real tiny. Yeah, I was showing the desktop. Um, thumb. Oh. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, look at that. that. Oh, holy cow. Is that like, does that help it? That's amazing. And now I'm going to mute myself again. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty, like, pretty wild stuff. Like, and it's, it's pretty big. It was, it's like, a, there was pretty early on in, in um, learning how to make tiles and, um, you know, set them and, and stuff, but um, definitely one of my, or definitely my most favorite thing I've made. And, you know, made a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So, um, okay, here's, I've got some questions. When you become a student, do you have set times allowed to use the studio or are there, hey, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't read this. I'm over 50. Hey, Mike, I, gotta I go already, down. hey, Mike. Yeah. I already answered that question. It was, oh. it was more of a, a class and okay. open studio question. Okay. Um, Okay. Um, Erica has a question. Oh, okay. I see that. I have um, been doing all wheel throwing since I've been um, um, like sheltering from the Rona. Um, and luckily I got a thousand pounds of clay delivered um maybe a week before um sort of the shutdowns and stuff and maybe i have 400 pounds 300 pounds left i've been throwing a lot a lot a lot and it's been great i'm been you know that's one thing i've been so fortunate to be have a little art studio and have um be able to do that and you know, I don't know if uh, little events like duck the malls, which is definitely not social distancing or is going to be able to um, work like it has in the past or some of the um, events. Um, who knows how some of those events, you know, they just canceled the um, wooden boat show in Olympia, which is I don't, I don't sell stuff there, but a huge thing for artists to, um, you know, sell and show their work. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it all, but I've been throwing a bunch of stuff. Um, a little bit too, I gave um, real early on in this, you know, just like clay has been such a valuable thing. Um, for me and my mind that I was, I gave a bunch away real early on in this. And um, I brought a couple things down that um, some friends um, and friends' kids made um, during this. And um, yeah, I'm, I'll show those right now. The, these are pretty neat. These are these, um, my friend Mary Jane and her kids, they made these. Um, they're like, uh, uh, guardians, like, gar no, garden guardians, and they're gonna put these all over their garden to, like, scare away bad bugs and weeds and slugs or something. Um, and these are not, not glazed at all, they're just fired, um, to cone six, and apparently you can soak these in buttermilk. This is what one of my friends said, Frankie said, is 
you can soak them in buttermilk and then moss will grow on them, which is pretty cool. So it just looks like, you know, prehistoric or, you know, uh, song of the sea-ish, like. Um, so that's really cool. And then this is, God, one of my best friends, Hadley, she made this. Um, that's Bobby, my friend Bobby's kid made this and it's pretty awesome. And um, I don't really know how she made it. I think she's six and that's like, I mean, you could drink out of, I mean, this is better than my first thing I made when I was like, this is better than stuff I make now. I mean, this is awesome. Look at that. So, um, yeah, but okay. So I've been doing more wheel throwing and just the, I've been having a hard time. Um, this is, this is a hard, this is a really difficult time. And I've been for everybody for sure. And, and it, it's really challenging to people's, uh, how people work and tile making is too much of a process. And I haven't been able to, to, um, concentrate long enough on one thing to, to keep a process going and and maybe i mean the longest i can really focus on something is you know the the process to cook a good meal or to throw a pot or to work in my garden for a while and you know interestingly like that's what i've been doing and paddle boarding a lot um on the nice days so um so yeah okay so i got this wheel here questions hey mike no i was going to pop in real quick and just say can, if you're gonna demo can you point the camera down a little bit because we can't see oh, yeah, yeah, yeah oh i didn't know if you were gonna do that or not so yeah, yeah i will thank you so yeah oh much. there we go perfect awesome okay. thanks <laughs> okay okay I gotta um, take this hoodie off. I need a haircut. Shoot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So the thing, um, can you hear me like above the the sound of the wheel? Okay. Um my main thing I love to say is um I I I think it's awesome to be able to um make like one of a kind things. Um I do think that with clay, like the most important, important thing, I, everyone sees me okay, is to work with um, like size stuff and not just grab some piece, random piece of clay, like, okay, I'm gonna make some stuff, you know, or random sizes, but work on sets of, you know, two or four or, you know, several sized um, or, or one consistent size piece of clay um, because that's going to train your hands to work better. So you can, so your fingers can do something similar every single time. And and um, I think I think that's if if you have a wheel, um, like that that would be the best thing to do. Or if you're gonna get in a class, um, 
that's a great thing to come to the class think you know with that mindset to do because that's gonna help your just help your hands learn what to do and figure things out um so i have cut these four um four pieces um these are all the exact same weight and we you can decide um whatever you want to do with um you know these size pieces and when i'm really thrown lately i've been throwing probably about 50 pounds a day it's been pretty when i throw stuff which is you know okay amount um but i'll cut up a whole bag in sizes that i want to work with and i have an idea oh, i'm gonna make some cups or i'm gonna make some bowls or you know i'm gonna make these and um i think that that's um helpful to learning and to go back to you know owning a wheel or learning i'm um you know everybody has you know mental health stress and a wheel i think is one of the best uh psychologists is around that's not even a word right and um just being able to you know feel centered and and doing something and creative and um like uh the uh, really a wheel is kind of the most important or or the most expensive part of the whole thing because you don't you can't carry it around but um i don't know i would encourage everybody to buy a wheel um so say with these i want to do um make pour bowls which is really um i like making them a lot <clears throat> and my deal kind of my attitude on throwing is i make stuff super fast i think um um kind of clay is one of the most uh it's pretty cheap you know this is maybe a pound of clay this is you know 30 cents so i'm not going to spend a bunch of time you know i i know what i'm doing but i'm, I'm just my attitude i'm not going to spend a bunch of time making i'm not going to make stuff all day or if i do make stuff all day i make a lot of stuff i have other stuff to do i enjoy doing other stuff and um, um being around clay and touching clay all the time isn't my idea the funnest best time it's not good for your fingers either um and this clay i have here this is a clay i um made um or i had clay art center make and hopefully it'll be in some future classes here um and it has a lot of ball clay in it which kind of makes it just feel more silky and it's easier on my on, on everybody's hands mine included my hands right now they look pretty good like feel pretty good but you know definitely stressed them out in my lifetime of being a potter and a skateboarder and uh you know stuff like that so um i think the biggest thing to do um to think about is having your clay kind of at a mound shape if you just try to put a piece of clay like this on the wheel you have so many corners that are just gonna disrupt how that can be centered and how it's going to introduce more water in there than it needs to and um this is just a better choice um the, and along with that smoothen the bottom out so there's no cracks or places for water to get captured because that's 
will be the reason why that's the first reason why the the bottom cracks on people's pottery um how's this going every everything's good everybody's good okay ready so um i like to have um and work with sp several sponges like a big one for cleaning my stuff off a little smaller one for doing the middle and then this one is the one i'm gonna throw with <clears throat> and i'm not really this isn't really a uh, time for me to uh, instructing people how to make pottery it's just more like what i do and think about the conveying that or um the classes end up being quite a bit different than this at Arbutus. Um, um, but um, yeah, so. I always use warm water, feels better on my hands. This wheel feels really slow. <laughs> um, so I've got this center and then, and basically, like I said earlier, I'm gonna make, um, pour bowls out of these uh, one pound pieces. Um, So this is um, so I've basically got my height out of this um, <clears throat> this piece of clay. This is as high. It'll probably go lower than this. But now I want to work on smoothing the inside out. So usually I get a bigger sponge and I wrap it up. And then how embarrassing. Actually, I, I've just forgot how to, I, I forgot how to, uh, I've been in shelter in so long, I forgot what I'm doing. I don't even know. While you're working on that, hey, Mike. Erica, are oh. you laughing at me? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a thumbs up. Um, somebody asked, Rachel asked, if the terms ceramics and pottery are interchangeable. Um, and uh, I should probably let Pamela answer this because I will make a guess. Or oh, she's looking at me. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, think po I think of pottery as making pots, like what he's doing now on a wheel. Uh, wheel thrown things and ceramics being a lot uh, more general it can include sculpture and hand building and things that aren't necessarily done on a pottery wheel but we'll let Pamela <laughs> who knows a lot more about this I wanted Mike to answer since it's his presentation but oh, yeah. ceramics is a very general term but I think pottery can be pretty general so. right. I'm, I'm going to turn my volume up here yeah I think Mike should oh yeah. Okay, I can't, I can't really hear what you were saying, Stacey. Oh, um, 
what are your thoughts on the difference between the words ceramics and pottery? Are they interchangeable? How would you describe the difference? And Erica also says um, that that last uh, mistake was because Pink Martini wasn't playing in the background. <laughs> oh, she's right. She's totally right. Oh, my God. Dang, dang, that's what's missing. You so much. Yeah, if you do come to my classes, it's always pink martini on the throwing nights and um great this is and then um 80s tunes on the glazing nights so how's that good background all right So one thing, I'm doing this um, shorter because part of what happened um, initially with that first one is besides the pink martini, the, the, um, it, it, was, it was too thin for what I was going to do with it. So that's the stuff you sort of figure out um and having multiple pieces to work with so you, that you can figure that out stuff out as you go is a i think a really good thing or how i work a lot so i've been doing this a lot with all of my stuff and basically I continue to see how it's, uh, hear how it's chattering on there. Um, th that makes a lot of really cool texture on the outside of the pot, which I think you can kind of see it. Do you see how it's, and it's making those wind waves or the like washboards on there. Yes. Um, that just catches glaze a lot cooler to me. To me, that's, I mean, it's pretty easy to make this smooth if I want, but I've been pretty into doing that for the last year or so. Um, and then from there, I'm going to stretch this out and I'm making this into a pour bowl, which, you know, you can make like uh, scrambled eggs with or a little batch of pancake batter or whatever. Um, I always use these little towels, like, uh, towels from the um like gas station towels or the the blue gas station towels are the best these these ones at arbutus are pretty good and to smooth the edge out and basically smooth the edge out and make it keep it dry um because the wetter this stuff is the the more likely it is to break or to um, get bent or something. Um, and then, There you go. 
that's how to turn 30 cents into 20 bucks, okay? Um, manufacturing. Um, so I need another bat. I work a little differently in my studio. I use a pad of clay on the wheel and lots of bats without holes. Um, Okay, no questions. I was hoping people had all types of questions for me. What the heck? We could invite people to um, unmute themselves and ask questions if, if you'd like, if we can manage that sort of one at a time-ish, that'll be a little tricky, but if anybody wants to unmute and chat with Mike while he's making these yeah, cool that pots. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That sounds like right. a challenge. Oh, somebody asks, Rachel asks, um, does it take quite a long time to become proficient at a beginner level on the wheel? And there's also um, Erica Cooper, who's here, who has been a beginner student, who's come along really beautifully, is making beautiful work now, who's who's a more recent beginner than Mike. So anyway, there might be a good discussion around that. Um, I mean, I, I guess proficiency, um, I think how I would put it is that anyone, if you bought a wheel and practice with 500 pounds of clay, which um, you, you would get pretty good and you'd at least never have to buy a wedding presents again. <laughs> You know, like, um, but I think it's just one of those, um, another one. So you noticed on this one, I didn't do the, you know, the, see how this one is smooth and this one, you see those ridges, this one, in its finished state when it's glazed and um and everything will look a lot cooler but um this one's a little wider but if i i mean if i really wanted to i could make them exactly the same i'm just kind of doing them different so people can see oh i need my glasses on to see the screen <laughs> So does that, I mean, does it take a long time to become? I don't know. Yeah, it <laughs> takes a long time. Just like well, a I've been taking them for, what, two and a half years now? I feel like I'm an advanced beginner. Like there's things I haven't done yet, but yeah. I have stuff that I'm willing to let the public see. I mean, I'm drinking out of one of mugs I've made, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, a, another year of a lot of practice, like you could like, I mean, people would want your stuff. Like it's not your, like you're throwing it away, Erica. Right. Or right. It's not like you're, you know, embarrassed about anything you make. Like, right. 
um, you know, people that are in the classes with you or impressed by your stuff and, you know, like you all, you can also teach people as well, which is cool. Like, so I think that, um, I don't know, I mean, but it, there's definitely people that have, have like spent their whole life doing it and, you know, are, three times, four times faster and I'm, I can throw stuff. This wheel's kind of slow though. Um, um, my favorite type of pottery to make, my favorite thing to make is just, you know, bowls, like salad bowls, little poor bowls, like big salad bowls, it's bowls. It just feels like the most useful thing I can make. It feels like the most, the most movement that's going on with it. Um, yeah, different bowls. Um, and yeah, I have just, um, hi Chaz. I have just, um, I kind of just, practice shapes on um you know every day on on all the on the wheel i think that um the different ribs that you can buy have have a lot to do with it you can make your own ribs as well i think that um that um you can make them out of wood or metal but these have a lot to do with the type of contours you're going to see. Um, how these work to make this, you know, like this little red one would stress the clay, would, wouldn't work for this to make this bowl, whereas this larger one will work that radius will make work to make that um, okay oh, i want to hold on one moment i want to check out this other wheel here and see if it's more powerful because this this one is like isn't seeming like it's like mm. Yeah, I'm gonna move my stuff over here. Is that okay for everybody? How's that, better? Better, worse, the same? I think as you, as you get into like um, bigger items, you need more power. Oh, you missed the first part, Janine. Um, well, thanks for being here. Um, as far as the um, buying good secondhand stuff, Craigslist is great. Also, Clay Art Center up in um, Puyallup is one of the coolest resources of this area and they've been making clay uh, and carrying clay and glazes and clay supplies since the 70s I think um, and if you're going to do ceramics like definitely awesome people to have a relationship with there's 
um, people, there's another place uh, in Seattle, Seattle Pottery, and then um, another place in Portland. I forget the name of that, but um, those are all great spots to get stuff. Oh yeah, same. So you see how this wheel has more power to it than the other one? Um, Frankie replied about um, the Clay Art Center and said um, they agree about Clay Art Center. Um, they went in and told the guy I was a newbie and he took a lot of time to explain the store and answered every 8,000 questions I had. <laughs> Great service and help on every visit thereafter. Only problem is it is a candy store. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a funny common problem in all the craft. Uh, areas that we teach here at Arbutus, you know, the, the fiber arts people like hoard yarn and wool and and the woodworkers hoard lumber and special pieces of wood and everybody's got their uh, little, well, big, in some cases, stash of stuff around their craft, which is kind of fun. Do you just work with this one kind of clay, Mike, or do you have do you have a stash of a variety of clays? Well, I used to have a different. I used to really love this one clay called JG, and I I use it for all my tile projects because it's the most glass-like clay that you can get. Um, the problem is that it has it's like really high percentage of feldspar which is i mean as a as a rock or mineral it's a like a close to quartz and and so it's like a gazillion little razor blades that are just mm -hmm. being crammed in your fingers um, if you're throwing a lot and I don't know if anybody ever noticed like sort of in the fall time when I'd be throwing a lot for the for the holidays like my hands would just be like not falling apart but mm -hmm. like definitely not feeling good and so um, so I recently switched and had this made um, and the, the ball play is just a lot smoother. Um, did that answer your question? Or? Mm -hmm. well, we have about five minutes left on our scheduled time but you know we can go over if we need to. But I've definitely switched um, the clays I use several times, you know, or for different things. Like if I'm making tiles, I'll definitely still use that JG clay. Um, just because it, if they're outside, the water won't it, it make them fall apart over years.
Yeah. Yeah, JG, I was just talking about that. And um, that was my favorite until... Best method to rehydrate clay um, is just sponge a little water in the bag and close the bag up. And just keep doing that until the clay gets to the consistency you like. Um, but try not to saturate the whole thing in that process. It's a little tough, but... Um, or making smaller stuff with the certain um, tough block of clay you have. That's it. That's all the questions. Hmm. Okay. So, I don't know. How'd that go? Is that all right? That's great, Mike. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, we can we can wrap it up there. Are there any more questions for Mike before we um, close it down? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask or type it into the yeah, chat box. I want to hear people. That's great, <laughs> great suggestion, Stacey. Oh, I want to hear voices. <laughs> Anybody out there? Oh, they might be feeling shy. Demo, Mike. Thank you. Oh, Susan. <laughs> Hi, Susan. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? It's good. Good. And you? Oh yeah, here's a great question. When, what, any dates on when Arbutus is gonna can thinking about? Oh, that's such a big question. Am I unmuted here? Well, or at least what phase? Right, it's phase. it's somewhere between the second and the third um, phases, I think. So, um, you know, I feel like at some point when we can have um, you know, smaller groups, maybe six people in the studio at a time and the back door open, have everybody wearing masks, um, you know, that, that we could do that. I think, you know, there, there will be a point where we can do that. Right now, I don't think we can do that, but I think it's close, maybe in the next phase, <laughs> whenever that is, the next opening. Um, you know, I think yeah, gosh, I think there's some stuff we could do maybe outside because the weather's going to be nice. But, you know, it's, it's a little too soon to say yet. But um, the other thing is, even in that scenario with, um, with the small groups and everybody wearing masks and washing when they come in and everything, um, there will be um, some students who aren't comfortable with that and some instructors that aren't comfortable with that. So I think there'll be some opening that's you know taking some risks that are different for that feel different for different people so um i and it's just hard to know and I, whether or not that's going to be enough for us to sustain our operations it, i don't know and how long we can wait till we can even do that i don't know i mean we have funding to last for a few more months but if this goes on into the the fall it's a little hard to know i mean we have to start making some money again at some point um and so it's there's a lot of uncertainties but we're okay for now and we, i think pamela's raising her hand uh, Steve, <laughs> i just want to add to the main issue like it's i think we're in phase one correct phase two phase, phase two. yeah we're in phase two right now well, anyway, I don't think we're allowed to do any gatherings at this point. I think yeah. we have to wait. That's, but, yeah, that, that and also, even. Also, yeah. if once we can start, there's always the potential that we'll be set back to yeah. another phase. So we'll need to um, design our classes in such a way that we need to be prepared for that maximum flexibility mm -hmm. in going either remote if that's a possibility or just only doing really short classes like weekend workshops things like that yeah so yeah definitely in phase we're in phase two and and we're not with the way we read it we don't count as as being able to open but um when i read phase three i think we are open and the way they're they seem to be doing things is within phase two they're addressing specific industries 
you know, retail uh, restaurants and uh, retail, and um, at some point we might read something that sounds like it it works for us, but it's a little hard to know. <laughs> right now, I don't see anything that's giving us any indication about when we can reopen. But I just hope it's not too long. <laughs> yes. I thought oh. we were in phase one still, aren't we in Thurston County? Yes, we are still in phase one, I believe. I think phase two is only for a few counties in Washington that have Oh, different counties. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. That the makes hope sense. is that we're moving to phase two June first, but we have to wait. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Xenia, who um gave us an appreciation. <laughs> we all need that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. All right. Thank Mikey. you, Mike. That was magical. Mike. <laughs> thank you super much. All right. Well, thank you for showing up, everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, wait. Um. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. We were talking before we started for this one is that um, next week, Another one at, at my at my home studio, right? Is that yes. what? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. At the same time, was it eleven o'clock next Friday? We'll do it again. So yeah. keep, keep an eye on social media and our website homepage for links and more information. Oh, so awesome. Are you, are you sending out anything about that? I think I got an email about these, right? We, we probably should do another email. We don't, we've tried to just send one a month, but this is such short notice. We might send another email out before, um, we should, we should try to get an email out. <laughs> Pamela's only working two days a week, so. Um, um, as far as that goes, um, we are also posting on Facebook and Instagram, and it will be on our home page, um, on our website. So those are places to look. Yeah, or if you follow me on social media, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have a um, uh, heads up about that as well. Great. Perfect. We look forward to it. Awesome. That is, that is. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Um, I, w I, w I just want to say, yeah, Chaz, that's a picture of Mike in the background. Where? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. When I was a baby, <laughs> yeah, we both. Chaz is a, a very old, good friend of mine. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. <laughs> Big band days. <laughs> Great class. Thank you, guys. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Stay in touch, Jazz. <laughs> okay. I